Good morning, everybody, and um, thank you for joining us this morning. Sorry, we're a little bit late. We've had a, we've had a few technical issues, which seems to be the uh, the way of the world at the moment. Um, I'll just do a quick introduction. So I'm Andrew Sinclair. I'm the business development manager for the uh, commercial team at NWG, um, and I'm going to kind of host the the, the Q and A today around bin the white. This this is very much Q and A. So if you've got questions, please do ask them. Um, that's that's why the team are here today to answer answer those questions for you. Um, we've also we've already got some questions from customers which have, have come in sort of before this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll start with those ones and I'll um, I'll add, add any that are asked during the Q and A um, when when there's a, a gap in speech. Um, and what will happen is I'll ask those questions to the panelists who you can you can kind of see on the screen here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, I'm just going to kind of go around um, and, and and say the name and then we'll get a little introduction and, and kind of how they fit in with the uh, the bin the white campaign. So first of all I'll start with um, Simon. I'll start with you since you're on the top left of my screen. Yeah, morning, Andrew. Um, yeah, my name's Simon Sianko. Everybody, I'm the I'm the head of the wastewater networks team at Northumbria and Water and. And it's my job really at Northumbrian with a with a team of people to try and drive down the number of blockages we experience on our wastewater network and reduce the problems linked to them blockages, so be it flooding incidents and pollution incidents. So that's how I fit into the mix. Excellent. So Steve, if you could just introduce yourself and sort of give them a little bit of an idea about what you do. Morning everybody, my name is Steve Green. I'm a SMO investigator. I literally go around the streets putting all of our kit in the ground um catching wipes and then tracking them back to the individual properties which are flushing them um and having the conversations and explain the issues caused and that wipes cause when they get into our sewage network and ask you very kindly not to do it <laughs> excellent thank you steve um, and then we've got uh, we've got naomi with us as well hi hi everyone so uh, I'm Naomi and I work for Lane Group as the marketing executive there. And I am also the campaign coordinator for the environmental campaign Unblocktober. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we've got a little poll for you to do, just one question. Um, and basically we, we'd like you to answer this as honestly as possible because this is, this is what we're here for today. So the poll that is going to pop up is, when I find it on my screen, have you ever flushed a wipe down the toilet so i'll put that up there i'll launch it it should pop up on your screen and if you can just click yes or no and then i should have some numbers coming through so i close that down so basically we've got an eye on 50 50 split so 46 percent of people have flushed the wipe um and 54 percent haven't that are on the on the poll today um i will absolutely hold my hands up and say that i have done in the past um mainly when I had small children and it was a kind of an emergency. So I understand the, the kind of how easy it can be to do it. Obviously, I don't do that now. I've been well and truly educated. Um, but thank you very much for answering that. And then what we'll do is we'll do another poll at the end um, just to kind of get people's feedback on uh, how this has gone. So I suppose we kind of, we kind of move into the questions section now. Um, the, the whole idea of this is around the fact that wipes cause problems. So how big a problem is flushing a wipe? Yes, yeah. for, for Northumbrian Water and for most, well, for all the water and sewerage companies in the UK, people flushing wipes is a, is a massive problem. Um, as a company, we experienced 15,500 blockages over the last 12 months, and, and two thirds of those blockages contained an element of wet wipes. So either wet wipes caused the full blockage, or wet wipes were an ingredient in that blockage. And when we have those blockages on the sewer network, what we typically experience is sewage then backs up through the wastewater system and it'll escape. And it'll either escape into people's homes and flood them out. So that's raw sewage in people's homes, which is horrendous. Or it'll back up and escape into people's gardens, into people's driveways, or it'll escape into a, into a into a nearby water course and pollute the environment. So for those reasons, it's it's horrendous. So wet wipes ultimately being disposed of down the toilets, being flushed, cause massive problems. So, so you were saying there was about there's fifteen and a half thousand blockages we had last year, and was it was it about did you say two thirds of them were kind of wet wipes were involved in that? So you you're looking at about ten thousand blockages a year, which is 
in some way wipes play a part in, in in the fact that that's being caused. So do we do we have any idea on sort of the numbers of, of, of sort of the the people that have been affected by it? Um, so you know, do we know how many how many times it's come into someone's property and I imagine ruined the the bathroom? Yeah, our as a as a company, we have to record these sorts of facts and figures for regulatory reasons. And last year, we ended up flooding four hundred and seventy two properties internally. So that was where sewage um, escaped and and caused damage internally to people's properties as a result of a blockage on our assets. Um, externally, 4,700 instances. And then with pollution incidents where we ended up polluting um, the local environment, we had 46 separate instances. And, and that's just for Northumbrian water alone. So you you make that bigger, you think about the country in general, you can multiply those numbers up massively. Yeah, so I, I suppose when you look, I mean, there's some there's some big numbers, and I suppose it's um, it's quite easy to kind of forget the the people on the back end of this when, when you're looking at numbers that large. Because I mean, if you're looking at that, you're talking about basically around about five thousand people, give or take, or five thousand incidents that have affected either people's properties or the environment. So you're basically talking about half of well, out of all your blockages, two thirds of them are getting caused by wet wipes, or wet wipes are certainly playing a part. And out of that half of those blockages are then leading to some sort of incident, whether that's somebody's external property, internal property, or actually with damage, you know, there's damage to the environment from that. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not, not great. So um, I suppose when we're looking at the kind of um, the damage coming into people's properties, I mean, maybe, maybe Steve has a, a bit more insight on this because obviously he's kind of on the ground dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, I imagine the damage for some people's properties is running into the thousands of pounds if it's if it's coming into a bathroom or near a kitchen. Have you have you had any experience of sort of having to deal with the aftermath of that scene? Yeah, we've um, unfortunately um, far too often we've I've been at the properties where it has literally come up through shower trays or overflowing through toilets. Um, at the end of the day. It comes down to the, the basic fact that obviously when the wet wipes block the, the sewer, they have to find the easiest way out. And unfortunately, sometimes that's in the properties. Um, it's it's not nice. People are, are distressed. Um, you know, we we've got to go in there, do our best to to clean up, uh, to help them out. Um, but it, it can't be nice. This, this is the biggest part of the message. Is it's not so much what you you could possibly do to yourself by flushing or your own property by flushing wet wipes. It's what you're going to cause your neighbours. Um, like you say, it could cost them thousands of pounds in repair bills or clean room bills, or whatever. It's, at the end of the day, it's it's an avoidable action. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've got a kind of anecdotal story myself. When uh, when we moved into the the house that we live in now, um, uh, it was a, it was an elderly lady who had it, and, 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 and she went into a care home, and a niece decided to come and give the the house a it was immaculate, but <laughs> give the house a clean, and, and she'd been flushing wet wipes down the toilet that we didn't know about. Um, and, and soon after we moved in, the, the drain blocked. And the way it kind of works in our house is it, it kind of goes out of a pipe in the wall, goes down through the garage um, into the drain there, and then that runs under the kitchen and out through the garden and, and, and into the rest of the street and into the network. Um, so basically what happened was the toilet blocked upstairs. Um, I had to call, obviously, Northumbria Water to come and help us out. Um, and when the guy came, he was kind of like, look, the only way I can fix this is by popping the drain in the garage. Um and, and if I do that because of the water, that could easily spill out over the top and flood your garage. And at this point, we just moved in, so we had boxes of photos and keepsakes and all sorts. Um, but we needed the toilet, so I had to get them to do it. Look, we were lucky that it didn't, but it could have very easily have just spilled out into the garage and ruined everything that we just moved into the new house. So yeah, it's it's, it's an awful thing, and I, you know, we we obviously feel for them customers. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this this education piece around. You know, it's it's a very simple thing to just put it in the bin, um, and it can it can stop a lot of these problems for people. Um, so I suppose when we're talking about wipes, are we, are we asking people to stop using wipes altogether? Is that the message? Um, I don't think it's um, when we're especially in not lanes are anyway. We're not asking people to not use wipes at all because they are very you know convenient for certain people. You know, I think a few years ago when there was talk of banning uh, wet wipes, if you looked on Mum's net, you know there was uproar because they help mum so much you know it's just so handy to have um so i wouldn't say we want to ban uh wipes completely it's just about proper disposal and 
you know, their plastic content if there was no plastic in the wipes and they wouldn't be as damaging to the environment. Yeah, Andrew, I, yeah. I think I'd just kind of echo Naomi's point there, really. It, the message for us as a business isn't for customers not to use wipes. It's simple. If you're going to use them, it's about proper disposal. And, you know, we've got the catchphrase now, bin the wipe. If you're going to use the wipe, bin the wipe. Your toilet is not a bin. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're certainly not telling customers not, not to buy them. What we're asking them to do is bin it. Once they've used it, bin the wipe. Um, when we came up with Unblocked Over and all these other campaigns like yours, Bin the Wipe came up. Um, it was because we were seeing what our engineers were having to face day in, day out, these pollutants. Um, so we thought, you know, we've got to do something about it. And uh, we actually did a few um, surveys, some research into it. And we found out that the term fatberg was actually becoming more and more popular. And it was, you know, it was increasing and in, um, people knew what, what it was now. But blockages were continuing to rise. So it was kind of what Steve was saying before. People aren't making the connections uh, between their actions and the consequences. Yeah. So that's how these campaigns have come about because, you know, it's increasing, increasingly more common to find blockages that are made up of these mass, masses of lights. Yeah. OK, interesting. So um, so I suppose, obviously, we've, we've been doing this uh, campaign for, for a little while now. Um, have, have we had any success in, in, in sort of reducing the number of wet wipes that are entering the system? Yeah, well, it's funny that the October that kind of Naomi's been involved in and that the Lanes group have led on kind of in, in sync, really, probably through coincidence with the timing last year around the same time we launched Bin the Wipe. Um, we originally had something called Dwayne Pipe. A lot of our customers will have heard or seen a Dwayne Pipe, which was predominantly, I think, appealed to children. And it was our efforts to try and engage kids with a message about three Ps, only put P, paper and poo down the loo. We moved to something, we thought Dwayne in a way has had, we needed to do something different with Dwayne and we needed to strengthen our message. So we moved to Bin the Wipe. Um, Dwayne still has a part and Dwayne's role will continue to be in, in schools, looking to educate kids, you know, the adults of tomorrow. Um, what we ended up doing with Bin the White, we launched um, a camp. Well, it, this campaign is still going on. It's live now. It's not just one month of activity. We started a piece of work in Stockton that Steve's been involved with with some of his teammates, where essentially we put devices inside the, the sewer network and we started to trace where these wet wipes were coming from and we chose Stockton because Stockton was a flooding hotspot and a blockage hotspot and what those devices allowed us to do was trace back to find which individual customers were flushing wet wipes that then allowed Steve and some of the other guys in the team to knock have conversations with these people and try and change customer behavior now what we found predominantly is where people have had those conversations where we found them and we've written to them, they've changed the behaviours. And what we saw in Stockton over a um, over a four month period, we saw a 61% a reduction in the number of wet wipes in the sewer network, which then has the benefit of less flooding, less pollution, et cetera, et cetera. Did something similar in Redka, but we used different tactics. What we did there was we gave everybody in the postcode, we gave them bins, bathroom bins, and uh, because of the research we did, we knew half of the customers did not have a bin in the bathroom. So it's logical then if they're doing, if they're cleaning with wet wipes, if they're taking the makeup off before they go to bed. And that's you, Andy, by the way. Um, but, you know, for all the different uses, wet wipes, if they didn't have a bed bathroom, they're going to chuck it down the toilet. Then you end up with blockages. Da -da -da. And anyway, in Redco, we saw a 43% reduction in the number of wet wipes. So essentially, these things were tried, did a lot of different stuff. No other company in the industry has tried this um, and the worked. So what we've done since is built on the work we did in Stockton and we've set up a team of which Steve's a part um, and we're going big bang for this and we're trying to roll this out to change more and more customer behaviour across the Northumbrian water region. Excellent. That sounds it's been really successful and I think... Um, I suppose there's probably a, um, an, a confusing element around sort of packaging because um, I've certainly seen it where you, you, you get packaging which says it's a flushable wipe. So I, I don't know, obviously, Steve's on the ground here and I, I think Steve's got um, 
some <coughs> some thoughts around the word flushable. Um, so, Steve, you know, what, what's what's your view on flushable wipes? What does that actually mean? There isn't such a thing, mate. It doesn't I don't, it doesn't exist? Um, basically, to me, the word flushable, all that means is it leaves your pan. Now, technically, a t-shirt's flushable if you want to go down them lines. Um, I, I don't, uh, the, the answer's simple, you know, it doesn't matter what sort of wipe it is, chuck it in the bin. The, the, I think there's a, the wipe manufacturers have a, um, a duty to be a bit more, um, or take ownership a bit more for, for this issue than what they have. Um, the top and bottom of it is, no wipe should go down the toilet. Um, I was hoping to show you the difference between toilet paper breaking up and uh, wet wipe um, in, in water. What I might do is, uh, afterwards, I'll do the little video in Northern Water and put it on the Facebook page um, just to show you what the, the difference is. There is no, in my opinion, there is no such thing as a flushable wipe. Everything should go in the bin other than the toilet paper. I, I suppose there's probably a, um, a, there's a difference between flushable and suitable, I guess. So, like, just because it goes around the U-Bend doesn't mean it should necessarily be going into the, the wastewater network. I've actually got a, I've got a packet. This is from, like, when my uh, my kids were still in nappies and kind of, you know, you can, toilet paper doesn't do that. You can see the fibres in it that sort of, you know what I mean? It's like that, that takes a, a, a reasonable amount of effort for me to break that apart. Whereas, obviously, we, you know, toilet, toilet roll doesn't. It just dissolves into the water. Um, I think makeup wipes are even more difficult to break apart as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose yeah. the, the probably the, the problem that um, the water industry faces is the fact that wipes are really good at what they do. They're a really yeah. handy tool. So I think that yeah. I, I think Simon's you know exactly right in what he was saying earlier, which is actually we're not we're not telling people to, to stop using wipes because they, they they are very very helpful for the the tasks that you need to do. Um, yeah. It's just about that kind of correct disposal method for for, for exactly. getting rid of them. Yeah. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. You know, they're they're, they're submerged in water all day in, inside the packet. So they're not going to be dissolvable or they would have dissolved already inside the packet. Same goes for period products as well. You know, they just disintegrate in use, but there must be something in there that's making them so durable. <laughs> exactly, which kind of, I guess, that, that, that leads to then the problem with the blockages happening in the, in the first place. Okay. So I suppose the, 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 there's a couple of questions around that, I, I suppose. So I, I suppose one of the things is, you know, we're doing a kind of this is very much an information piece for our customers to try and let you know try and get the message out there that um, you know wet wipes cause these issues. But um, should we be going to the customer or should we go to the manufacturers of these wipes to to have those conversations with? I suppose probably both, but I, I don't know who's got um, an idea on how we take that. Andrew, do you mind if I start and just give you, uh, I guess, our our thinking at, at Northumbrian? I think as an industry, as an industry, the water industry is trying to do a piece piece of work for a number of years with manufacturers to try and work together. But but the reality is it's been slow. And, and in the meantime, we've still got probably hundreds of new products on the market that give give us issues on the wastewater network across across the UK water industry. So really, we've not made as much progress as we'd have wanted. But the problems now, we've got a, 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 a current um, danger and a current risk and current problems for all our customers and in the environment. So that's why we're taking action now with Bin the Wipe. We can't wait uh, however long it might take us to do more work as an industry with manufacturers We've got to take action now. So I think there will be messages for manufacturers, but they'll have heard them for years. But there's certainly messages now that we're working on harder than ever with our customers around. If you're going to use wet wipes, bin the wipe. So I think that there's, there's messages for both. But the one thing we can do as a company and as an industry now is work harder than we've ever worked before with customers to encourage, to change behaviour and take more action. Um, with them yeah. yeah so i suppose then um again it kind of comes back to you know you're absolutely right i think you know we all know in business that things take time for for things to move and change particularly when you, you're talking about sort of large-scale projects um but then you've also got things where you've got the kind of the fine the, the, the fine to flush or the the and, uh, andrex washlets where it says it's backed by the water industry so it's kind of like what that kind of to me as a as a customer would kind of give me a bit of oh well can, can I put that one down then? And, and it sort of leads to a bit of confusion. So maybe yeah. maybe you could clear that up for us. 
Yeah, well, it, like like you just said, it is confusing. It's a bit of a minefield. You know, you go to the supermarket and you can see this one says flushable, this one says biodegradable, um, this one's got the fine to flush logo. You're thinking which you know which one's the right one to pick. So I think it's really simple, just like your message. It's just bin the white. Let's keep it simple. Don't flush it. Bin it. Brilliant. Um, so I suppose um, obviously we've we'll, we'll spoken to Steve a couple of times today, and he's on the ground. So Steve, I, I don't know if you can give us a bit more information on how we kind of track back, because obviously all these all these sewage pipes are, are are underground. You can't see them. How how do you know if I flush something down my toilet? How how can you actually tell that it was me that did it? And and then go and have that conversation with me to make sure that I don't do it again. Um, it's we we came up with a, a concept um, to start off with a piece of kit called the porcupine, which we would put into the public sewage, um, which is a, a large cast piece of metal with um, with barbed spikes on, if you like. Um, and what we do once we start to snag wipes, which to be honest, that's all we're doing. We're trying to we're trying to snag wipes because that's what happens naturally in the in the sewer network. This is why they cause blockages. They don't. It's <laughs> A wipe doesn't break up like toilet paper, so what happens is it'll catch on a little bit of debris or, uh, you know, some little snagging point, and then once one's caught, the next one will catch, the next one will catch, the next one will catch. So we're using that principle that we'll put a piece of kit into one of our public uh, public sewers in the manual, we'll monitor it, um, and then gradually by moving the kit further and further back up the network, we'll come from the larger sewers down to the slightly smaller sewers, and we can take big chunks out of out of whole housing estates now as to where these wipes are coming from. And gradually by changing the kit, um, we we start off pretty much with the potty pines. We've got a couple of large bits of kit now, like the, the Goliath and the Barbarian. Um, and then we can drop down to, once we get down to the small sewers, where they're, obviously they're further up the connections, the, the di pipe diameter drops down to 100 mil, four inch sewers. We've got smaller bits of kit like the Stinger we can put in there. So just by literally snagging wipes, and monitoring the sewer, um, we can move up the network and literally track back to the front door. Just saying, it's a simple principle. Basically, it's people people don't realise. Um, they think, you know, like uh, we're, we're just pretending, we're just playing at this. We're, we ain't playing. It's um, I'm doing this D and D out. I've I've knocked on people's doors and I've proved to them that I've caught them basically. Um, and uh, to be honest, sometimes the look of shock is like, wow, you're actually doing this. I didn't think you were you were being serious. Yeah. So sorry, I, I, I just saw uh, the, the, there was a question pop through just at the time when I um, when I was asking you that one, Stephen. Uh, the, the the question that's come through, I'll read it for me, is, um, I've seen pictures of Northumbrian water teams in the streets with scary looking tools that look like torture devices. Um, I hope you don't turn up on uh, people's doorsteps swinging those around. So this this must be was it the the barbarian and the what was the other name of the other? I've heard of the port. Yeah, I've heard the, of the two. The two larger ones we've got are the Barbarian and the, the Goliath. The, the Barbarian was actually um, um, a, a little bit of a, an evolution. We had another one called the Sentinel, but we'll, we'll find that was getting um, moved around a little bit within the, the manual, so it wasn't as productive as we were hoping. Um, so we came up, I came up with an idea of this, this one, um, which is basically like a, a spiked, almost a spiked crown, if you like. Um, and we put that out on um, all the social media earlier on this year and it was actually the public who chose the name Barbarian but yeah it's um it's a scary looking piece of kit like so <laughs> very effective I, I, though, very I, I assume that bit of kit Steve's designed to kind of catch the wipes but still allow obviously the the, the rest of the, the water to kind of get through is it a, by saying it looks like a crown yeah it's <laughs> yeah because of the obviously because toilet paper breaks up um it literally just turns to like fines, um, like a fine mush in the water, so that can that can flow through our devices, no no issues, whatever. Um, yeah. but baby wipes, it just snaps them and they they can't go anywhere. And obviously, again, once you catch one, the others did build up, and you'd be surprised how many baby wipes we can pull out with one manual in 24 hours. It's just ridiculous. I think we'll look at those sort of stats that we talked about at the beginning of, of sort of probably 10,000 blockages caused by them. You can you can imagine there must be a fair amount of them going down there. But one of the questions that's come through from one of our customers is, um, so you know, obviously you 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 put your um, your barbarian or your porcupine or your, your your other device down into the, into the sewage network. You've caught wipes. You've tracked it back to a property. Um, so so where does it go from there? Obviously you, you mentioned that you had a you know you would have a chat with that customer to explain the reasons why they shouldn't be flushing wipes down the toilet and the consequences of that. Have you ever had this situation, which I, I assume you probably have, where you've had to go back to a property 
possibly twice or multiple times and, and have the same same conversation as that has that ever happened? Yeah, um during our our um trial in Stockton we had the uh, a gentleman down there who we had the conversation with him um and we told him that we'd carry on still monitoring and then we carried on catch catching wet wipes so we had a, a slightly stronger um letter sent out to him um explaining what our procedure would be um and he then still wouldn't stop so we moved him on to the next stage which um simon will probably be able to tell you a bit better about that one but it, it's basically a um a letter delivered by a private security firm which is basically our intention to um serve an invoice on him for um blockage clearance and investigation time and at which point I think he realised we were getting serious and we literally stopped overnight. Okay. So yes, I mean if we can bring you in to give a bit more uh, information on that. Yeah, it's just it's just worth saying Steve's right. Um and you know his experience with a gentleman there in Stockton, we have got a five stage process that we've formalised internally with the help of the customer services team. We've spoken to our consumer champion, CC Water, about it. So they've been in the picture and we've shared it with them. But essentially, we've got a five-stage process. So what will essentially happen is there'll be informal communications with our customers for several on several occasions um, to try and get them to change their behaviours. Now, if customers continue, I guess, to ignore Steve, ignore some of the letters, what we'll basically say is, We've we've tried to talk to you. We've given you all the information you need. If you keep doing this now, we're going to look to recharge our costs. So essentially, stage four of this process would be we'd look to re we'd recharge our costs. So the costs of Steve and the team investigating, finding the blockages, removing the blockages, potentially clearing up any damage, either external or internal flooding. By that point, you'd hope the vast majority of customers that have stopped because they'd have learned that they'll they'll not have been aware they'll have changed the behavior with either at stage one or stage two for persistent offenders if it gets to stage four we'll look to recharge our costs and in the worst case where consumers uh, customers continue to put wet wipes into the network and steve and the guys are finding that they're continuing to put wipes in the network we'll look to we'll look in the worst cases to potentially prosecute customers so that's essentially taking them to court and 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 taking that action. That's the final stage of the process. Um, so we've got a process. We've only ended up with one or two customers so far at stage three. It's never gone beyond that. So we've not actually had to recharge any customers yet because essentially they've learned as we've been speaking with them and they've changed the behaviours. And hopefully it won't come to it. Hopefully it won't come to it. But we will take that action in the worst cases. If, if people don't do what we need them to do um, and what help us protect other customers and protect the environment. Yeah, I suppose that's why we're doing this, isn't it? This is the whole point of doing these campaigns is so we can get the message out far and wide before we ever have to get down any of those sorts of routes. And you're right, it's um, it, it, may, it may appear unfair to you know, particular people, but actually this, this is about protecting everybody in your street, everybody who's attached to that network, um, protecting the environment, which we've got to, you know, obviously a, a want to do but also an obligation to do as well as being a water authority andrew it's probably just worth saying um because otherwise it could be seen as a bit kind of potentially a bit gung-ho um but we've actually got legal powers under the the water industry act to to take that action uh, where customers put stuff and unflushable items into the wastewater network that impedes the flow of wastewater and sewage so it's not something you know we've dreamt up in you know we're taking a flyer we've got we've got powers to do that under the water industry act and we will use them in exceptional circumstances yeah brilliant um one, one other question that's come through is um sort of so um how are you dealing with or even helping businesses and organizations where uh, multiple people might potentially be flushing these things down the toilet so um the i think the they basically kind of said they're a community centre, so they've got um, individuals going in there. There's facilities, obviously, for them to use, and, and maybe they're, you know, not doing the right thing and putting them down. Because I suppose at the end of the day, it's the business that's going to get the contact around your flushing wet wipes, 
um, and you're not allowed to do that. So how, how do we support them as a business? We we've just started um, wait, in the last few weeks. We've started a, um, an investigation in one of our hotspots, and we were getting extremely large numbers of wipes um, and other unflushable products, um, including like uh, disposable gloves, all that sort of stuff. When we tracked everything back through the network, we came across um, a care home. Um, obviously, put some some kit around you know, the, the sewer network around the, the property, and realised we were getting a, a, quite a, a huge amount of um, unflushable material coming from from there. Um, so we passed it on to our analyst, and um, him and our team later went down. We had a, had a conversation with the, the manager. Um, Absolutely, were, were brilliant and um, totally accepted. Um, didn't realise what was going on. Obviously, didn't realise the damage that was that was getting caused. Um, took um, the action of retraining you know, all of the staff. Um, doing things like some of the patients who who may have had dementia or whatever, yeah, removing wipes either from their room or putting them at a height where they can reach them because we're finding wads and wads of these things flushed. So it'll just look like somebody's flushing a pack at a time. Um, the the obviously we've we've um we had that conversation and we've carried on monitoring the the network there and they were once once they were informed of the damage that that was getting caused they've been 100 percent on board and literally we've took about i would say about 60 percent of the wipes going through that part of the network have stopped now due purely to that that one property um the the other one we're having a um a little bit of an issue with the recreation centre. Now this one's a this one's a little bit more difficult and I, I do feel um for the the person who's running the recreation centre. Um we've discovered the, the second largest um provider of wipes to us if you like um is coming from the recreation centre and and again it was a large number um we've tracked it back we've um, our analyst been down, had a word again with the, the, the manager. Um, I know they're putting things on their Facebook page to, to, to try and deter people. They're, they're putting leaflets out. Um, he or she, whoever it is, um, they're, they're going to have to be quite strict with people and inform people that, unfortunately, they could end up getting prosecuted as a, as a community centre um, because it's, it's their assets that's putting these wipes into our, into our network um, it's uh, that's going to be a, a conversation that uh, unfortunately the manager is going to have to get quite serious with people going in there and inform them that there could be costs involved in this and that cost could affect the community centre and how it's run. Um, I suppose um, so we we'll, we'll kind of talked about uh, Unblocktober very uh, sort of at the, at the beginning so what's what's next for Unblocktober? We've got Two days left of it, three days left yeah. of it. So what's what's the ne- what's the next step? What what are, what are we going to do from going on from this point? Well, we're asking, you know, because people have done the the challenge. Um, if they've done it properly, they will have um, refrained from putting apologies from putting any of the items that we've asked them not to down the the toilet or the sink for 31 consecutive days, which is the same or the average amount of time to form a new habit. So we're hoping that even though October's over, unblocktober isn't over and we're hoping that they're going to carry it on for the rest of the year and hopefully they've picked up um, these really good habits habits and they're going to carry them on for the rest of their lives hopefully um so that's the next step uh this year obviously we didn't have as much time to plan as we would have liked uh because of the coronavirus pandemic but um i think this year has been even more successful than last year and i hope that continues for next year and the next year after that I'm just interested, really, Naomi. So, kind of explained a little bit about what we're doing at Northumbrian. We we've been the white, but have you heard, or do you pick up from any other water and sewerage companies anything kind of particularly special that you think's worth sharing on on this call with us? Just in terms of other things we could be thinking about, or other things our customers could perhaps be thinking about. Is there any? Have you seen any moments of magic earlier earlier in the month that are worth sharing? Um, you know, all the water companies, utility companies um, around the UK have been absolutely amazing with their support. And they've all got similar messaging um, to yourselves and to us. 
Um, I know Thames Water have done a great job. They had a, um, a superhero campaign and it was highlighting um, their engineers and how they were going out educating people. Um, and also CC Water that you mentioned before, they did a uh, amazing a competition online for um, their social media followers to design a, a, a Unblocked Over superhero. And they actually picked, uh, I think it was someone called Zoe from, um, I can't remember where she was from, but they picked her design and the, like made that into the, the proper artwork. Um, so that, that's been great. Um, but it, it's all this, it's just, it's a similar messaging because it is just so simple. And it's not meant to be difficult for people. Don't flush these wipes in them. So, so we yeah, just had okay. one, one, of the, one of the customers commented on here saying uh, super heroes as in building the word sewer in yeah, that, which exactly. I quite like that one. That's, that's a nice little one. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a couple of questions come in, which are kind of um, kind of around the, the, same, the same sort of um, area. And one of them sort of saying, um, so, you know, this, this, this can be a community issue. So it's, you know, it's not just affecting one household. It could affect a couple of households in, the, in an area. And actually, um, ha has anybody thought about doing a sort of a kind of a, a name and shame around kind of, you know, it, it is this house. I, I don't know if anybody has. I don't know if that's in any of the plans or, or whether we even could. Um, but it's it's a question that's been asked. So if, if somebody could give us a steer on that, that'd be great. <laughs> Andrew, I think that as far as we've gone with that, uh, we've been we've quite publicly shared our um our our hotspots our blockage hotspots into a postcode level and, and we've actually and you know if you think about the work steve's doing we've been the wipe and we've got the guys on the ground doing they're essentially moving from problem postcode to problem postcode when it comes to individual properties i i, I don't i don't think we'd go that far if you think about the potential implications be it from a data protection point of view you end up with vigilantes on the ground kind of going after the neighbors and yeah. and ultimately it'd be us as a business who'd made that happen i think that'd be a step too far um that'd be a step too far i i think we keep away from that i think we've got to keep doing what we're doing i think we've got the balance about right um and hopefully the, ne the sh our goal and our aim should be not for it to get that far um, you know, I mentioned stage four, stage five. We want to keep away from that. We don't need that level of publicity. Um, we should be able to tackle customers' behaviour through the informal means and the conversations Steve's having, et cetera, and some of the campaign stuff Naomi's talked about. Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, one of the other things is sort of like kind of are we are we sort of advertising the fact that these, these you know, that we can trace the wipes sort of back to an individual property? I, I, I know I've seen a few things on sort of social media around bin the wipe. But, I, you know, is, is there any sort of um, as part of maybe perhaps the Unblocktober campaign? Is that is that part of it where we say, actually, we can track this directly to your property um, to kind of give people that ownership, I guess, so that. The kind of that realization that you know the, as steve mentioned before you know we're we're not messing about we, we know exactly where they're coming from and we will come you know and have a conversation about it i was going to say before um this live q a i didn't actually know you could trace it back to the household so that's that's news to me i think that's definitely something that we'll start telling people <laughs> andrew we, we have actually done it and and with the help of the the comms guys you know the communications guys at nw I've been saying to them, we need to get these messages out. We need to let customers know. And we've started to do it. It's been on social media. We've included it now as some of our our comms. We, we, we need to tell people more and more that we're able to do this and what the potential implications could be for our customers because there'll be a, there'll be a number of customers who won't change their behaviours if, they, if they're not made aware. So we're going to do more and more of that. Excellent. So the, um, the the person who asked the question about the um, the you know should, would we do the shaman thing? Basically, what they've said is I don't agree that we should, but it, it's definitely worth a question asking. And I, and I think if if anything, I think one of the one of the key takeaways from from today is about the fact that we're, we're trying to get the information out there so people are just aware. Um, we're not we're not the police or the you know the, the the white police or anything like that. What we're trying to do is get the information out there so people can make the you know the right choice, change the behaviours if needs be, and really what that does is it protects the rest of our customers. Um, well, got, we kind of are in yeah. in a way we kind of are the white police. We just don't want to arrest anybody and send them to jail. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we, we might come and knock on your door, but we, we don't have any jails as far as I'm aware. Um, 
it looks like we've got one final question coming in here and I think we'll, we'll probably bring it to a close because we're kind of getting to the end of our time. Um, so uh, the question that's coming is, uh, what about the Australian sewer netting at the end of sewage outlets uh, to help the environment? Um, and it looks like the, the customer may well have um, sent us in a few pictures um, in the past for us to look at. Is that, is that something that we were, were looking at? Is it something that works with our network? What's our stance on that? I've seen some of the, the, the these pictures and and I'm not sure if the, cus the customer in question is aware. We do have a lot of our, our storm overflows are screened. So typically under storm conditions, when we do end up discharging um, to the environment, that is screened because we do have screens on our sewer network that the likes of Steve and some of the other operatives do regularly cleanse and clean and make sure we capture the vast majority of debris before it's discharged to the environment. Um, so yeah, we, we're aware of we're aware of, of 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 that sort of idea of the netting, and we've seen some of the pictures, and we've already got some of that type of kit on the network to try and minimise the amount of debris that's discharged to the environment under under storm conditions. If you're watching us live today, or you're watching it on catch up, um, catch up makes it sound like we're Netflix. Um, if you're watching this up on catch up, um, if you have ideas or you know the, the you know water networks are different all over the world if we've got different people who have lived in different parts of the world and have any experience on this is what they did do send them in all that information is just stuff that we can kind of feed into our plans to see whether or not it works in, in our particular situation we you know we, we we want to offer information to our customers but our customers might just have that nugget of information that helps us make the step change as well so do do send them in to us and i'll give you some contact details where you can do that at the end um all of a sudden we've got a couple more questions coming um, so, uh, are we as a company pushing for legislation to hold um, the white white man manufacturers uh, accountable? So, I suppose that probably um, that, that goes back to what you were saying before, where we are having those conversations with with manufacturers. I believe, um, if, if if I remember correctly, I think Kimberly Clark is is, is being quite positive with us and is sort of taking that, that that further forward. So that, that that's great to hear. Um, but that that is going to be a long process before that changes. So that's why we need to do um, the the campaign around being the wipe and you know the, the yeah. support around sort of unblocked over to kind of get get that step change in our network today, and we'll still deal with that um, sort of um, on the on the the, the long term strategy, I guess. Um, Can I add to that quickly? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, actually, part of the campaign this year, uh, we we released um, some. Uh, artwork of uh, a new sort of style of wet white packaging that was actually in the form of cigarette style packaging. So on the front it had, you know, like a big warning sign. It had pictures of fatbergs or, um, you know, pictures of a turtle with a wet wipe in its mouth. Um, and that was an, actually an idea that um, a young lady came up with um, at a school that we did a, a fatberg fighters lesson at. And um, I think the next step, probably next year from October is pushing that and pushing manufacturers to consider their packaging and um, lobbying really for, for changes in the industry. One of the one of the comments that's just come through from one of our customers on here is actually um, it, it, it might be worth building into our conversations with the manufacturers that actually if you if they're not the same color as toilet paper it might make people just stop and think oh that shouldn't yeah. go down there um so you know, I, I don't know if that's a, it's a potential uh, a potential idea that we can kind of um throw through there um and again sort of kind of talking about sort of getting kids involved which obviously we do <coughs> through the way in pipe um and, and that's the the sort of the um the, the early years education route that we would we would use to kind of get that into schools um and and, and, and sort of push that information at a young level because um, any anybody who's got young kids know that they'll, they'll come back and tell you off as soon as look at you if they think that you're doing something wrong. Um, I got wrong the other day for leaving a light on. I didn't realise I'd done it, but uh, I was I was thoroughly chastised by my four year old. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll keep plugging on with that as well to try and um, sort of uh, get get the message across and, and and try and stop these pollution incidents. Which at the end of the day, the the the, the person who suffers here is the person's house that that sewerage either comes up through the toilet and, and is in the house or it's in the garden where the, you know, the kids play or they want to have barbecues or, you know, sort of, um, it's, it's really about the customer. And that, that's why we are doing what we're doing today. Um, and, and somebody's problem and wildlife as well. Absolutely. Yeah. The environment yeah. and wildlife need to be as, as much as a part of that, that protection. So I think that brings us to the end of the questions because we are kind of um, running, running on for time now. Um, so I suppose, um, 
we'll, we'll do the second poll here. So the, the, the second poll that we've got here. So you'll remember when we did the one at the very beginning, um, we asked um, if, if people have, have, um, have flush wipes um, down the toilet. And we had a, a 46 of, of yes to a 54. But this next one is sort of after after hearing what we've we've discussed today around the reasons why um, we're really passionate about this and, and really driving it. Um, after what you've heard today, would you flush a wipe now? Or in the future so i'm going to launch that now and if people could answer that as honestly as they can that will give us some good feedback on whether or not we're um we're, we're doing the right thing here around our messaging there we go so well that is very very um positive because what we've got there is a hundred percent of people said no so um obviously we've um the, the messaging's getting out there and i think people um People understand that we need to just bin the wipe. Um, so I've got, I, I kind of, I jotted down a few sort of, well, in my head anyways, we can spare back a few takeaway messages. So I think so. The, the thing is, it's kind of like the wipes are the, are the cause of the majority of the blockages in our network, or they're certainly attributed to those blockages. Um, so if we can, if we don't put them down the toilet, they don't have the chance to cause that blockage. And that, that's one takeaway. I think. Um, the fact that it can go around the U-bend of a toilet, as Steve said, you can get a T-shirt down there if you were, you know, really, really wanting to. Um, that, 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 that brings up that idea of flushability and suitability is two separate things. Um, so, you know, again, they'll get snagged in the network and then that leads to those, those sort of blockages. Um, I, I think absolutely right as well. We live in a world where plastic is a is a an issue that most people are aware of now due to the the sort of the the great work that was done um on sort of blue planet and, and things of that nature and actually in these wipes the reason that they're so good at doing the jobs that they do is because they contain plastic so from a one use plastic point of view um possibly if you could minimize the use of them that would be great but we're not telling you to stop using them um that actually the, the last case scenario for us as, as a water company is that actually we can prosecute under the Water Industry Act, which we do not want to do. That is not what this is about. What it's about is trying to get information out there to try and help our customers and support them so that these these wipes don't um, don't end up down the uh, down the toilet and blocking these networks. And and really, I suppose it's a really simple change. All it is is not putting it down the toilet and putting it in the bin. Bin the wipe. Bin the wipe. In the way, that's it. Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. That, um, that brings us to the end. Um, I'd like to obviously, first of all, thank everybody for joining us today. We appreciate you giving us um, the time and, and filling in the, um, the polls for us. Um, I'd like to also thank everybody, uh, every one of the panellists who's been on today. Um, thank you for, the, for, for sparing that time. I know everybody's busy at the minute and, um, you know, it's kind of getting that hectic time of year as well. Um, so thank you very much for your time and, and explaining the points that have been put forward. Um, what we'll do is if, um, if you want more information in the wipe, um, there is a section on NWL's website. So if you go to nw.co.uk forward slash bin the wipe, one word, um, we'll get you through to the web page, which has a load more information on there. Um, as part of that, we've got a nice poster on there that you can uh, download and print. So if, perhaps if you're a business and you're looking for something to put up in the toilet area, um, you can get that there. You'll also notice if you're live on the day that um, as part of where you've been asking the questions underneath that, there's a section that says handout. You can download it direct from there as well. Um, we, we do a lot of things on social media. So if you search hashtag bin the wipe, that should pull up um, most of the, the things that we're putting out there. So it'll give you an idea of the, the messaging that we're trying to get out and um, hopefully some success stories and I would imagine probably some pretty awful pictures as well um, to kind of really kind of explain the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Um, if you do have any further questions uh, for the team, um, feel free to email us, email us in. Um, you can do that at bin the white one word at nwl.co.uk. Um, and that brings us to an end. So thank you very much. Stay safe. And I'm sure everybody will join me in saying bin the white. <laughs>